Hey, welcome to the Science of Parenting podcast, where we connect you with research-based information that fits your family. We will talk about the realities of being a parent and how research can help guide our parenting decisions. I'm Mackenzie Johnson, parent of two littles with their own quirks, and I'm a parenting educator. And I'm Lori Corthels, parent of three in three, two different life stages. Oh. I'm going to, that's going to be a while. <laughs> uh, I have two that are launched and one is still in high school. And I am also a parenting educator. And here we are, season seven. Yeah, season Yay. seven. We're already this We're deep in it. Look at us go. I know. Yes. I don't know that I ever imagined there would be a season seven, but oh, no, I know Lord, we're all we're going to a million. A we're not stopping. <laughs> Prepare yourself. <laughs> okay. I'm preparing. I am preparing. I will. I will, past seven. <laughs> I will use my adaptability and prepare for season seven because I can do that as we learn more about temperament in season seven. <laughs> Look at that segue. <laughs> Wasn't even planned. <laughs> so in season seven, we are going to be kind of looking at blending two previous seasons together, right? And so like season three, last fall, we talked lots about temperament which ugh, Lori's favorite topic of all the topics. <laughs> it is. And then in season I five, confess. yes, this spring we talked a lot about kind of the different ages and stages, right? Like infants versus toddlers versus preschoolers. And this season we're really kind of going to meld those together. We're going to take a temperament lens to look at kind of like big common tasks that kids work on, right? So like toddlers tend to have tantrums. And what's the temper? Oh, those are all teeth. Look at that. They uh, are. All the, what's the temperament view on that? What influences that? How can we connect with our specific kid about this specific thing? So that's what we're looking at. Yes. We're going to blend them yes. together here in season we seven. We are. And I mean, I think it's super important to think about the fact that, you know, when we, when we look at temperament, it is important to think about that each individual stage that children go through is impacted by temperament. Oh. So, oh, yeah. you know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend seven, eight weeks talking about it. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we want to point out, which, you know, I don't really feel like we talked a lot about, which how did we get past, how did we get through season three without talking about it? But so like the beginning of every parenting textbook I've ever had to read for school, for college, or grad school, whatever, this idea of bi-directional, that parenting... Yes is bi-directional is always what comes up. So mm -hmm. we actually have a citation I want to read from this one from Dr. Diana Lang, right? An Iowa State professor who we love and her book, Parents and, Diver and Family Issues in Diverse Contexts. And so she talks about that parenting is bi-directional. And let me tell you what we mean by that. Not only do our, as parents and caregivers, do we impact our kids, but our children influence us as parents and primary caregivers. They do. So their characteristics, like their gender, like their temperament, their birth order, their health status, this huge variety of things, all these child characteristics also influence us as parents. And man, how are we a parenting podcast who's gotten into season seven without bringing that up? I know. My bad. Well, we're, we're bringing it up now. We're, bringing we're practicing. It up now. Yes. And I mean, we have a million more seasons to go, so it's all right. We do. Right. <laughs> But yes, this idea of, you know, I think about like, even as infants, you know, we're going to be looking at these stages. Like if I have, and I can speak to this because I had two <laughs> very different babies um, um, as my, my infant that was a little more fussy and a little bit crankier. I didn't maybe feel like as effective as a parent all the time, right? It was more difficult to soothe them or mm -hmm. they didn't sleep well or whatever it was versus how I felt, right? That impacted my behavior as a parent, how I felt. Their characteristics yes. impacted how I felt, which impacted my behavior. And then on the flip side, when I had a child that was easier to soothe, that slept better, that all of these things, I felt a little more effective. Like, oh, I got this in the bag. I, I got this. Out. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so, again, their characteristics of being easy to soothe made me feel more effective, which impacted my parenting. So it is. Absolutely. We impact our kids with our behaviors, but... Our kids' behaviors and temperament and health status and, 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 affect and. us, right? The way that we parent and the way yes. that we feel affected by our specific kid and why it's different to parent each one. Our own reality impacting research, maybe? Huh? Huh? How about that? Yes. Well, research Both. and reality coexist. And if you haven't caught do. that yet, 
<laughs> oh, all right. So let's start off. We like to start off with a little definition about what we're talking about. So just as a quick reminder, our definition of temperament is from Mary Rothbart and colleagues. And according to them, we talk about temperament as that physiological basis or in your body. It's your body. There are individual differences that come up when we react to situations. Uh, we self-regulate or calm ourselves down differently. That's a bodily, physiological type of function. Um, we're motivated differently. Uh, we, you know, our affect or our attention to different things. All of that is is different. It's individual, and so temperament is our genetic predisposition. It's we can actually predict behaviors when we really understand temperament. And so it's with us from the very beginning. And I love how Mary Sheedy Krasinka talks about it when she talks about it as the core. So think of yes. uh, a couple of circles together, right? And there's inside the big circle is a little circle and that's the core. And she says that that's temperament. Those are our genes. Um, our genes provide the template to our behaviors, our reactions, and then the environment, how people respond and react to us begin to kind of build out more circles. And that yes. provides us with opportunities for learning, um, learning the skills to help us manage the temperament that we got genetically, right? Oh, yes. And okay, you said something there that I feel like you said kind of quickly, and I want to make sure that everybody heard it. Okay. Temperament is a way that we can predict yes. our kids' behaviors. Yes. Because it's about that pattern of behavior, right? That pattern mm -hmm. of reactions and interactions with the world. I can anticipate that my slow warm-up kid mm -hmm. may have a hard time, even though it went fine at the dentist last time. This time, literally this last week, yes. <laughs> that I took my child that slow warm-up to the dentist, this time was hard again. Yes. Right? And but guess what? Anticipate. When that child is 21, uh, like I had this weekend, 21, <laughs> slow to warm up, I still needed to anticipate, but I could predict mm -hmm. it and be prepared. Mm -hmm. I think that is like the key word that I'm like, oh, why temperament? You can predict it. Yes. You can anticipate like, okay, this, my, this particular child will likely have this particular pattern of reaction. Exactly. Because I can. Yes. Yeah. Because it's there, yes. it's permanent, it's true. It is, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And I think looking at that temperament, right? Um, Barb, our writer and kind of content curator, reminded us a lot in season three about temperament as a gift, mm -hmm. right? That it's a gift that we receive that we didn't get to choose. It's mm -hmm. a gift that our kids receive, if mm -hmm. they're our biological children, receive from us and our co-parents. Yep. Um, but that it's a gift. And when the beautiful thing about viewing it as a gift, right? We didn't get to choose it. But when we think about it as a gift, a gift is something that we value and appreciate, right? We we take care of it. Yes. And so I love that idea of like this temperament is a gift. And when we view it that way and we think about the unique way that our kids come into the world and are gonna interact with the world that way. Barb said this beautifully. I have like a little teary. I love how she said this. Uh, she wrote, believing that the unique way that our kids come into the world is going to propel them forward during difficult days and bless us during our most joyful. Right? Mm. So that it's a gift. Yes. But that we I love that. It, right? That temperament is. It's going to be something that's going to help us get through hard times. And But it's also going to bless us. I think of, I joke about my spirited daughter. But oh my gosh, that girl makes me laugh, right? Yes. Like, oh, Aww. I love, I mean, I love both my kids so much. But I do sometimes it's like, yeah, this is challenging for me. And, and right? And mm -hmm. it's so fulfilling. And it's so, yes. And it's a gift. <sighs> it is totally a gift. And if you listen to season six, then you, you can hear Barb's voice and just yes. her voice delivering that message of it being a gift and then creating this word picture of I can see the gift. And if you think about what Mary Sheedy Krasinka talks about it, like a core, and you think about that core inside the gift, like inside the gift is the gift, right? Yeah, it's the, the present, the thing. <laughs> and then you put a box around it or tissue paper or confetti. Um, you might add a card, you might add wrapping paper and a bow, but 
inside there is that thing that's the gift. And that's what temperament is. Hmm. And so Love all it. the stuff, yeah, all the stuff around it isn't the actual gift. It's the mm -mm. personality. It's the way it's shaped mm -hmm. and packaged by the environment. <gasps> but the temperament is at the core. Yes. Oh, I love that. I like that yeah. word picture. Yeah, love it. Love it. And and really, as we think about this, all of us are different individuals as we're born. Everyone's individual. And so we begin to think about how can we appreciate our children's temperament? Um, how can we understand it? How can we think about their behavior in a different way? And, and Mary Sheedy Kersinka also talks about nudging and practicing with our children to help them learn to behave differently, to help them learn to cope with what we gave them. And sometimes people say, oh gosh, Lori, you know, your, your kids must have never had any behavior problems. And I think, <laughs> oh gosh, my kids were kids. Like they were children <laughs> growing up and I was growing yes. up with them. And all along I was practicing and nudging and helping hopefully teach them how to deal with the temperament that I genetically gave them along with my co-parent, right? Yes. So those are the things that we can appreciate. If you think about season three, Mackenzie, what are, you know, what did you come to appreciate about temperament in that season? Uh, holy cow, lots of things. Okay, <laughs> one, I want to say I appreciated Mary Sheedy Krasinka and that we got to yes. interview her. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's, I don't think what you were asking. <laughs> But if you haven't heard that episode, <laughs> go back and listen to that. Oh, that's like got to be top three for me. Okay. Anyway, what I have actually learned about temperament, and I think that I've been reflecting on in the last year since we, you know, really dove deep into it, I think of kind of two things. I think of how I've been able to see, right, see those temperament traits play out in my kids. Like mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. pattern of behavior is related to this trait. Um, and so I do, I think about that, but I, I also think of some of the similarities and differences between my kids. Oh, so yes, like absolutely. I have two, I have two intense children, like, <laughs> like me, <laughs> and then I have a spouse <laughs> who is very mild. So he's outnumbered. But, um, I think being able to see that and learning to appreciate that as a gift of Yes, sometimes it means when we arrive somewhere, we bring noise, mm -hmm. right? My intense children and I bring the level, bring the volume level up. But also, my intense children, I get to know where they're at, right? Mm, like, absolutely. It doesn't feel like a secret, like, what's going on with you? Like, no, I know. I know what's going mm -hmm. on with you. Your intensity shows me. And so learning to appreciate that similarity between them, but also a difference between them is one of them is more kind of distractible, perceptive than the other. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I feel like even just in the last few months, I've been really learning about when, when my daughter was a toddler, I could use that distractibility to my advantage of like, oh, the whiny, you know, whatever. Let's look at this other thing. <laughs> right? uh, and that was a little bit easier. And my son is not quite as distractible. And so mm -hmm. like appreciating how that was a gift to me as a parent with my daughter, but also realizing like, okay, but how is this going to be, how is le his less distractibility? How's that going to be a gift to me here too? So, oh, and as he grows, yeah. how yes. will being less distractible be such a great gift that you gave him? Yes. And thank well, I didn't about... give it to him, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh. just that that idea. And that's really what we're going to talk about this, this whole season is how to find those gifts at different stages. So, you know, it might have felt really challenging when they were a toddler and not very adaptable. But now all of a sudden as a teen you know, they're not very adaptable, which means that their friends might not talk them into spontaneous risk-taking activities. And so that's, you know, that's kind of where we're going to land this, this whole season. Yeah. What about you? Are yeah. you thinking about a certain thing? I mean, you've known temperament for a long time, but we did deep <sighs> dive it last fall. So what have you been thinking about? We did. And it has been so awesome to be able to kind of go back to my roots uh, in terms of really applying those temperament uh, traits, the knowledge of temperament and yeah. understanding, you know, my, my, my kids are older, they're 24, 21 and 16. And mm -hmm. how I understood them as, you know, middle school children, elementary school age children, I'm still utilizing temperament information, goodness of fit and understanding to help them with the tasks and challenges of being young adults. Yes. Right. You just and, summarize temperament and parenting in those like six <laughs> words. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to go back. Yes. I'm gonna have to go back to listen to the recording to see what I said. But you know, parenting my my older two daughters through their teens is different than parenting my youngest daughter through her teens. So it, you don't get to be like one and done, check mark, check the box, <laughs> learned it. Um, I am still practicing temperament uh, and in temperament. I'm practicing it in adult relationships as well, which is super oh, wow. awesome about temperament, that this is a lifespan skill that you can utilize. Oh, yes. Well, and I, you know, my co-parent, my partner and I have different temperament. I mean, some similarities and some differences. Yes. And then, yeah, seeing that in our kids. I was like, but even my younger sister is kind of transitioning into the world and she's living with us right now. And so it's been really interesting to see how her and I, like our temperament is different and how that Absolutely. comes out to play in the tasks that she's working on as an emerging adult. And awesome. it is, it's in every relationship. Like your temperament is. is a part of who you are, right? It's at the core. And it's then at it's wrapped in this personality. But like the interactions that you have, so yes. like largely based in it. Oh, it's crazy. Totally led us right into the other piece of research that we wanted to talk about today, which was William Carey and Sean McDevitt's book, understanding your child's temperament. And they really talk about how important it is for parents to understand their children's behavior by considering their genetic temperament. There are quite a few different research articles. And I mean, oodles, how about not Ooh. even quite a few oodles say, not of research quite a few. <laughs> yeah, around temperament that says, when you begin to understand you feel more confident in your parenting. Your emotional regulation helps teach your children theirs. Uh, Thomas and Chess talk about a goodness of fit, which means that you know, you're know you making better connections with your kids. And what you're doing as you learn about temperament research says is that you're learning to respond in a way that supports the child instead of from the perspective of what's wrong with them and how can I fix them? Yes. Um, and, and we know that challenging behaviors are frustrating. How children respond can push our buttons. And so there's this little two-step process I love that, um, you know, Bill Carey and Sean McDevitt talk about. And so step one is actually essentially remembering that temperament is genetic. So they got their temperament from someone. Mm -hmm. And it, it might be you. Just saying. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> So step one, remember where their temperament came from. And then step two is to really begin to think about how can we be supportive of that natural tendency? We don't necessarily have to say, oh, well, they're misbehaving. And so that's just how it is. That's, that's not what it's about at all. It's about, okay, there's a misbehavior. I understand their temperament and what pieces of this behavior is caused by their temperament, how can I teach them techniques that support their temperament to help them handle what they came with genetically and improve that behavior? Oh, yes. And I think, okay, so two steps, right? Like, yes. all right, parenting, temperament, understanding these things. One is acknowledging it's genetic and yes, where it came from. But I think also acknowledging like this temperament is not changing right? It's yes. genetic. And so step one is to acknowledge, understand their temperament. And then step two, how to help them interact with the world, right? How to support yes. them and teach yes. them the skills they need. And yeah, yes. the skills that my one child needs because of their temperament, different than the skills my other child needs because of their temperament. Absolutely. Sure. And I do it. And even that, when they're 21. Yeah. Even when they're 21. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, what about five and two? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> definitely now. Definitely now. Um, but I think the other interesting part about it is, yes, I think sometimes when we use that term like goodness of fit that we've used mm -hmm. a lot or, you know, we use it with temperament, but also the idea of supporting your child and their temperament. I think sometimes people do have the misconception that's like, oh, this is their temperament. OK, this is just how it goes. And they think that's what we mean. Like, I think you're so right that people assume it's a well, I mean, my child's less adaptable. I mean, I don't want like, to push them. Free pass to misbehavior. No, that's not it. <laughs> yes. No, but I do think, I, you know, you have some really great notes in here about how we put those pieces together of, I understand your temperament and I see it. I acknowledge mm -hmm. it's not going to change. And 
that te- that temperament is going to influence your behavior. Yes. The behavior is what I can help guide as a parent, yes. right? That I can say, these are desired behaviors. These are undesired. The mm-hmm. toddler tantrum in the middle of the grocery store is an undesired behavior for me. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I want. And so then I can think about like, this is influenced by your temperament. It helps me understand why it's happening. And I can say, this is an appropriate behavior. So the way that we react as parents to our kids is behaviors, yes. right? separating temperament from behavior. Yes. The way we react and guide their behavior while also acknowledging and supporting their temperament, right? Mm-hmm. Like the skills that they need to learn, right? My less adaptable child, I'm very adaptable. And so it stretches me a little to be like, okay, sure. this change and this unexpected <laughs> is hard for you. Just let it go. No, wait, <laughs> not that. <laughs> this change is unexpected and it's hard for you. Okay, what are some of the skills we need to think about? We need to think about flexible thinking. Okay, Mm -hmm. some of the things that we can do. I can help you prepare. It might go like this. It might go like this. Mm -hmm. This could go this way, right? And so those skills that we can do that, we can guide their behavior and give them a positive sense about who they are as people because that temperament is who they're always going to be. Absolutely. And you just said something that Barb said too, and I underlined it, and I thought, we have to say this. I'm here to help. Yes. Like, here's what your temperament is, and I'm here to help. Yes. I cannot let you, I know you're angry. I cannot mm-hmm. let you hit. Like, yes. That is not safe. I have to keep you safe. Yes. And I'm here to help. Like, instead and I'm of here to we help. Could, yes, mm-hmm. I'm here to help. So, thinking about the idea of as parents, we can influence behavior that we want to be intentional <laughs> about honoring and supporting our child's temperament, helping them understand how it's good and helping them learn the skills that they need, you know, they, we think about helping guide that behavior. And I think, I don't know, I guess I just feel like we should talk through some of our own examples too of like, how does that impact you? How are you interacting with your kids in a way you think about temperaments not changing and I could guide behavior? Mm -hmm. Like, where's that fit for you? Um, Okay. So I think about, I probably think most about my middle daughter and how sometimes even at 21, she's not very adaptable. Even at 21, she, um, you know, is going to maybe have that more somber, serious, more negative mood. Even at 21, you know, she is not going to uh, be as approaching. And so I still need to teach her. And the nice thing is that because of her age, I can say, I'm guessing you might be feeling like this. You know, there, even though yes. you, have to walk into that door and go do this job interview. Here are some skills that I'm here to help you learn to make that go better. Yes. Right. Understanding that I can't just say, oh, well, you know her. She's a family friend. Just go in and chat with her. No, the temperament at the very core still says, I am uncomfortable. I've I've not ever done this before. I've never been in the small room with her before. Yes, I know her, but so that's how I use temperament still as my children are older. Um, and think about how can I support their natural tendencies? Oh, definitely. Yes, and the, that separation of like this is what's happening. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. Like your temperament is not bad. It's neither here nor there. It just is. And it's a beautiful thing that makes you you. And I can help guide them. Yes. I think this, I'll say this summer, I took my daughter, my spirited, uh, very funny. I literally sent texts to my husband of like things she has said to me so far in the call. (laughs) We had a little running (laughs) list of the funny things she said that cracked Um, me up. But one of the things that wasn't cracking me up so much, um, I have a pretty low activity level. And so we took a long road trip to get Mm -hmm. to go see this family friend. And that to me, it's like, okay, let's get in. Let's go. Let's go for a long time. Knock it out. She was restless. Her high activity level, right? And so there were pretty often, it was like, oh, are we there? Oh, when do we stop? Oh, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know? And so on the way there, especially, we kind of struggled through that. And then on the way home, I was better prepared, but practiced, right? On the you way there, practice. I could, predict. Practice. <laughs> I you could, could predict. predict and practice. Yes. I maybe could have predicted it on the first, on the way there a little better. <laughs> uh, I was just worried about getting on the road. But 
I think about that restlessness, that's her temperament. That wasn't going to change. Mm-hmm. We, you know, had a better plan for how she could do some movement in the car. We had dance parties, those kinds of things. But also, <laughs> literally, I just had to laugh. We stopped to go to the bathroom at like rest stop or gas station. And then she was literally like dancing in the bathroom, like on the little tiles, dancing around. And yes. I was like, oh, girl, that is your temperament. And mm-hmm. in some ways it was like, OK, this is weird. Why are you dancing in the bathroom? <laughs> you know, in some ways it was like that. But I was like, actually, you know what? This is a desired behavior for me. Like, yes. go for it. Dance it out. You yes. love this song. Like, yes. and it was about she was the behavior. She was dancing. She was getting those mo- that movement out. So her body mm-hmm. felt better in the car. And so it was just like the temperament is the restlessness. I can't change that. Right. Like to, how it's appropriate to express that, how it's appropriate to fill that need yes. was stuff I could give more thought to. And so that was, yeah, the restless road trip. And I was the like, restless road well, trip. We could just, I could just drive like at least halfway before we have to stop. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> like, and it was not, that was a no go. <laughs> but think about the fact that she's also five. And so oh, yeah. part of her development at this stage of time is really about some of those large muscle movement yes. activities. And so just because of her age, purely because of her age, she's, her muscles are saying, yo, time to, time to stretch me, time to reach me, yes. time to dance me. <laughs> yes. And so that, I mean, that's what we're going to do. The rest mm. of this season is yes. say, okay, hey, let's look at that preschooler. Let's really talk about what is that preschooler learning to do right now? And, and, you know, think about temperament in that way. Yeah. Well, and I had, you know, in my head, I was like, okay, keep her busy in the car was what I was thinking as a parent. And it was like, on the way there, it was like, I didn't think through the, okay, keep her, find ways to help her move right throughout our trip rather than right. just keep her busy. And so, right. but then on the way home, I was like, okay, I saw that. I can reflect on that a little. We can do a little more on the way home, but so I do, cool. I think... Yeah, part of that temperament, part of that age. And I do. I'm excited for how this is going to work this season, for how we're going to dive into this idea of like, okay, you're this age, like we have kids this Mm -hmm. age. What are they working on? And how does temperament influence it? All right. So definitely this season, we are thinking about temperament again, getting back in that mind frame. And but looking at it with these specific ages. So, so far, we have reminded ourselves, right? We've reintroduced this idea of temperament as right? It's genetic. It's a part of who we are. It's at the core of who we are. And that, you know, as parents, we get to acknowledge that temperament, see it as it is, find ways to support it, that we can help Mm -hmm. guide their behavior, help them understand what's desired and undesired in their behavior. And, you know, that's really that term goodness of fit, which we use a lot in season three. And I know we'll explore more definitely in this season, but yeah, we're going to we're going to be looking at that. And then, of course, we want to remind everybody, who are we leaning into this season? Right. Which researchers that we love in temperament? Well, all yes. of us. But- yes. <laughs> We've and you know, the, the season three allowed us to reconnect with many of them personally. And so that has been super awesome. And I think that that lends itself to even even more cool research, nerdy tidbits that we're going to yes. share with you in season seven. But we rely heavily on the uh the the temperament theory behind um, Thomas and Jess and their nine temperament traits. And we look at all nine traits have been gifted to us genetically. And how do we use those nine traits based on how much did we get? How much activity level did we get? How much adaptability did we get? And then, of course, Thomas and Chess coined the phrase goodness of fit, which really we've talked about that. So we're really going to lean into those traits, looking at a toddler with high activity level or um, myth busting, some of those things that happen in infancy. And if we look at some of the, do you want me to share some of the episode highlights? Okay. 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 Give us the sneak peek. What are we going to be digging into this season? So if we look at the tasks of infancy or a challenge of infancy, one of the hard things about infancy is sleep, right? And so we're going to tap into some of our favorite temperament (laughs) researchers and see what they have to say about what temperament traits are really impacting sleep and what is it about sleep challenges um, that can be based on temperament. 
think about myth busting those terrible twos, right? And let's turn those into terrific twos and, and those temper tantrums that happen and what pieces and parts of temperament are impacting those temper tantrums and how can we learn about what those toddlers are really feeling developmentally and then add temperament on that. And uh, we're going to do similar, similar emotional types of things with preschoolers, uh, with school age children. We're going to talk about socialization and getting into those friend groups, um, yes. as well as looking at, you know, what is it that, what is it that teachers can learn about temperament in their classroom and how to create different classroom environments uh, teens, oh gosh, those teens, you know, looking at becoming independent and autonomous. And I love getting to speak with teenagers about their own temperament because what it allows them to do is recognize that the things they're feeling, the mistakes that they might be making, the behaviors that drive other people, uh, you know, to be frustrated with them, that they're still okay as a human being this yes. temperament, we can learn how to work with that. And so I love talking about teenagers, um, talking with teenagers about their own temperament. And then maybe at the end, we're just going to take a little bit of time and talk about uh, special needs, diverse needs, you know, look at how temperament, because everyone has a temperament, children with special and diverse needs also have temperaments. And what are some yes. specific temperament traits that can create challenges? Or what are some specific traits that we can begin to leverage to help them um, with some of those skills if they have a special or diverse needs? So that's kind of our season. So you gotta stick around. <laughs> yes. Well, and honestly, and I feel like we should say, you know, we talked about it in season three. Um, you know, one thing to mention is that as a parent, you can take a profile. So understanding yes. your own temperament, you can also do it for your child's temperament. So a couple places you can do that. Uh, temperament.com uh, mm -hmm. is one place or preventive ounce. So that's preventive yep. And so both, both organizations have spent years researching temperament and parent child interactions. And there's all kind of amazing stuff with that, but that's a really great way as you kind of follow along and you're going to hear about yes. these nine traits repeatedly through the season. And so if you're like, well, I mean, I think maybe I was wrong. I will say that straight up. I was sure that a, like one of my kids had this particular trait and then I completed the profile. I was like, you know what? Actually, it's that trait that mm -hmm. I'm seeing in these instances. But yeah. or if you need help getting connected with that, you can also email us. Um, so you can email us with your questions about it at parenting at iastate.edu. So feel free to reach out to us too to check out those profiles. So yes, yes. all kinds of good stuff coming. Well, okay, so I know this is just the intro to season seven. Do we invite our producer in? I don't have a button that says she can't come in. I don't Stop. have Blocked. right. <laughs> I don't want a hard question today. I know, right? <laughs> Oh. I know you can't stop me. I no. gave you a whole season without me, and you got Barb for a whole season. So I'm gonna <laughs> come true. back in. We do love you. It's we just the do. Question is sometimes hard. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, and it was kind of nice for me to to take a season off, and all I got I had to do was show up in like my t-shirt and <laughs> hair and a bun, and it was it was great. But uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be back, and I'm going to really um take it easy on you this first time around oh, just good okay. in case okay. anyone's listening hasn't been with us before let me introduce yes. myself yes <laughs> I'm Young. Um, i am podcast producer i'm also a family life educator uh human sciences specialist with these ladies so i work alongside them pretty much every day doing things and then i get to come back and ask them hard questions and then i get to listen to them about 10 more times after this uh, <laughs> while I edit it. So that's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing that. She hears that's, us on repeat. Yes. yes. So, so that's who I am. And uh, for my question this week, I just want to know what are you most excited about for this season? Mm. That's it. What are you most excited about? Mm. <laughs> I can answer that right off the top of my head because it was so hard for me in season three. I, I mean, granted, if you've listened to season three or if you go back, give yourself plenty of time because they did get longer yeah. uh, than we wanted. But it, that's, it was so hard for me to not keep sharing tidbits and information about, okay, okay, but 
if you try this, um, and this doesn't work, then you can try this. And so I love that we're going to be able to spend just dedicated time on each age and right. temperament. That's exciting. Yes. yes. I'm excited to take the temperament lens on a specific, like, I don't want to say issue, a specific opportunity mm. or challenge mm. with our kids at different ages. So yeah, we talked about temperament in general. We also talked about, we did get a chance to kind of do some sleep and temperament with McCall mm -hmm. Gordon. But right. that was specifically more around our spirited kids. But so getting the chance to dive into how temperament influences these common parenting challenges. Yes. And I also think I'm excited for the opportunity to kind of build empathy between parents from mm -hmm. the ones of temperament. And yes, I think of how learning about temperament has given me more empathy for other parents of like, yes, this is what I face as a parent. And temperament is a big reason why it's different for you. Yes. And so, yes, I experience this and you experience it differently. And like, and that's, that doesn't mean we have to do it the same. That doesn't mean it's good or bad. It means it's different and yes. that we each are doing what we need to do for our kids. And so I'm also excited to see, to hopefully spread around some of that insight that I've been able to gain from temperament as we look at these kind of specific challenges with our kids. Yay. Hey, it's so dorky. It's sappy and I'm excited. <laughs> and I knew you guys were excited about this. And I just want our listeners to see how much excitement, obviously. I mean, it's not hard to tell that you guys are excited about temperament. I'm excited. We, we, our whole team loves temperament. So, yes, yes. Um, but something for our listeners to continue to look forward to. So yes. thank you. And I'll make it harder next time. Okay, no, we'll we'll look forward to that. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's our stop brief talk section uh, with our producer Mackenzie Young. She does comes in for this little bit towards the end of our episode and throws us a question. What's which mm -hmm. reminds us we don't know what she's going to ask, but it requires us as hosts to practice our flagship parenting strategy, which is stop brief talk. So we call that our little stop brief talk space. Mm -hmm. To yes, stop, take a breath, and then speak with intention. So yes. Awesome. Yes. So that's what our season seven is going to um, provide for you. Hopefully a more insight into not only the age of your child, the milestones that are happening um, and some of the ways that we can support the gift that we gave them. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, and today we did, we felt like we needed to kind of bring back the foundation of, okay, it's been a while since we've talked temperament and kind of catch everybody up. Or if you're joining us for the first time, hello, we're so excited. You're yes, here. we're welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, but we wanted everyone to be caught up on this idea of temperament to reintroduce and meld these ideas together. And so, yeah, that temperament, it's genetic. It's these nine traits. It's a matter of, did you get a little or a lot? And that it influences how we interact with people, how we react to the world, our behaviors, all of these things. And that but as parents, we can use this. I kind of feel like it's like the secret sauce. Like it, it is temperament a little, is yeah. kind of the secret sauce. Yes. Of, I understand my kid and I can anticipate yes. my kid. I'm going to acknowledge and honor their temperament. No, it's not going to mm -hmm. change. But that I can also support and guide their behavior. So we do. Yes. We hope that this is, you know, temperament's a big part of the parent-child relationship. And we're excited to dive back in. Hooray. Yes. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today on the Science of Parenting podcast. And remember that, you know, you can listen to us each week on your favorite podcast app. Yes. So please do come along with us as we tackle the ups and downs, the ins and outs, and the research and reality all around the science of parenting. The Science of Parenting is hosted by Lori Kothals and Mackenzie Johnson, produced by Mackenzie DeYoung, with research and writing by Barbara Dunn Swanson. Send in questions and comments to parenting at iastate.edu and connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. For the full non-discrimination statement or accommodation inquiries, go to www.extension.iastate.edu slash diversity slash ext.